Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at my NeoVim configuration. I've been using NeoVim for about a month now, and I've really been enjoying the whole process of configuring it to be the best editor for myself. And so I thought today I would show you everything that has gone into my configuration from the things that are very useful to the things that just make it look nice. So maybe you can consider adding some of this stuff to your own configuration or, you know, just enjoy watching someone else's configuration video. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing is the terminal that I'm using. I'm using Westerm, and the reason is because I do development on both Linux and Windows, and I needed something that worked on both so I don't have to manage two different configuration files uh, because that would be annoying. And Westerm is great because it's GPU accelerated, which means I have cool transparency like this, and I can also print images to my terminal which is really, really nice. Um, I say this because the edit, the terminal that you use with NeoVim heavily affects the actual experience using it. So I highly recommend getting a cool, you know, terminal emulator or something like that because it can make things really, really nice. With that being said, let's go ahead and open it up. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have this dashboard, which is not the normal dashboard. And this is thanks to alpha.envim. Um, so if we go to alpha here, it's basically just a plugin that gives you the option to have some cool ASCII art and some buttons in your dashboard. And these buttons are actually interactive. So if I reopen it here and I press like B, I have my file browser open here, or I can press R and go to my recent files. So it is pretty cool. Now, to be honest, these buttons don't really get much love. They're kind of just there for decoration, um, but it, it makes it look like a more complete editor, in my opinion, to have like this kind of stuff in the beginning. Inside of our net.lua file here, um, the first thing you might notice is that I have a relatively unique theme, um, and this is a heavily modified version of vague.envim. Vague.envim was a theme that was created to emulate how the Primogen theme looks with uh, Rose Pine on his terminal because it looks you know very unique and so they tried to emulate that with the theme vague.envim and so i took that and i basically removed all of the warm colors and i altered it to make it a cool theme like this um, so this is my configuration here if you want to like pause and look at it um, so i have just basically what i'm doing is i'm removing italics and then i'm changing the colors here and as you can see i am an indecisive person so i do change the colors quite frequently so I gotta be honest, my configuration is not the most organized and neat one on the planet. And that's because I was learning when I was making most of this. So a lot of it is kind of just like hodgepodge, like stuck together kind of things. But the good thing is that it works and that's all that really matters to me. Um, and so you'll see things like, for example, this fixes telescope on Windows with like layout groups and Next.js and stuff like that. So there's some random things inside of my init file. But what really matters here is that we have lazy NVIM loaded here and lazy NVIM, honestly, it carries the whole configuration. It's the reason that I've been able to move this quickly with getting my editor configured. Um, that's because it supports um, a file system for loading plugins. So what I can basically do is I can put all my plugins inside of this special folder inside of Lua slash plugins. So I have all of my plugins in here. I apparently have 26, which is a lot, but yeah, it basically just loads in all of these files here. All these files just return a table like this. It's then loaded by lazy and everything just works very, very simply. And so if there's one thing to get out of this, if you are wanting to get into NeoVim, it is to use something like Lazy or you can use Packer. I decided to use Lazy because I found it to be a little bit easier. So Lazy loads a lot of plugins, but what are those plugins? Uh, let's go ahead and just go through the list of the plugins that I think are really, really useful to my workflow. The first one is Telescope, and that's because that's what I've actually been using to move around my configuration. So I can look up Telescope using Telescope here. Um, and basically what it is, is, is it's, a, it's a tool that gives you this useful pop-up um, for, you know, looking up files or for example, grepping through things so I can like look up where I'm changing my color scheme here. And this is every time that I say color scheme inside of this code base here. And I can even do cool things like changing the color scheme. So for example, I have another theme that I like. I like to change it to the um, Gorgoroth theme here, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, but let's go ahead and change that back. So it is extremely, extremely useful for basically flying through a code base very, very quickly. Um, this is my configuration. It's nothing crazy. I've just like enabled hidden files and stuff because I don't like hiding files and that's kind of it. There's nothing extra special about this. I would say that the next most important thing on the list would be the LSP setup. Um, LSPs are extremely important for development, of course. And to be honest, um, I have ripped this basically almost exactly from Typecraft, the YouTuber. Highly recommend his to series on setting up NeoVim, by the way. I'm using Mason, Mason LSP config, 
and nvim lsp config to have this work and basically the idea is i just load in mason like this i have an ensure install list which is just to ensure that all of these LSPs are installed. And then inside of LSP config, I can just go in and set them up like this. Now the programmer in you should be screaming, oh, why are you doing this one by one by one like this? But to be honest, I'm only ever adding one LSP at a time. So usually it, it ends up being like, okay, I wanna add an LSP. So I'll just like highlight this, copy it, paste it, change the name and that's it. So it's not a big deal for me to do this procedurally. And it also means that I can do more in-depth customization to certain ones, like for example, Python here, where I want to check if there's a virtual environment and return it, otherwise return the global one, depending on the operating system. So stuff like that is, is possible because I've done this procedural approach. Does it mean the code's a little bit ugly? Yes, but you know, it works for me. So it's it seems to be good for that. I'd say the next most important thing on the list is my formatters. Uh, formatters are really, really important for me because uh, unfortunately, I have to work in a lot of TypeScript code bases so with a lot of JSX and there is a lot of indentation and weird formatting that goes on with JSX. I don't want to do that myself. So I heavily rely on my formatters here to make it easier to do this sort of stuff. And I use conform.envin for this. I originally used null ls, but it got deprecated and then I used none ls. And honestly, I just was having so many problems with none ls that I switched over to conform. And since then, I haven't had any issues, probably a skill issue on my end. I mean, I've only been using NeoVim for a month now, so it's probably on my end, but conform has been just kind of like a, you know, drop in and it works right away type of experience for me. So I highly recommend it if you need formatting in NeoVim. Now we've talked about a lot of really, really important plugins, but let's talk about the smaller ones that you probably wouldn't think about initially. So for example, we have tab out here, which is just basically to give me the, the ability to be inside of like parentheses like this and press tab and I jump right out of there. It's extremely, extremely important for me. Um, so I use it all the time, except I don't use it inside of curly brackets because I don't like it there. But, you know, everywhere else I use it. Very, very cool. And I basically just grab this straight from the GitHub. You can even see the GitHub comments in there. And yeah, that's how easy it was to get it set up here. On that same note, we have auto pairs. Auto pairs is really, really important to me because whenever I write something like parentheses, I want it to close it for me. And this is something that we really take for granted in things like VS Code, but NeoVim doesn't come with this. And I was really, really shocked by that when I first started. Um, and so this was probably like one of the first three things I added. I Googled like, how do I get closing parentheses in NeoVim. I need this because I can't even write this configuration file until I have it. So this has been here and I don't think I have changed this file since I put it in there. It's just been kind of like, it's kind of just worked seamlessly right out of the box. So that's another essential. Another one is comment.envim. And this basically just gives me the ability to comment anything. So I can just press GCC to comment something, GCC to uncomment it, and then GC to comment a selection. So that's some cool stuff like that. And there's not much else to say about that one. These are just kind of like the essentials for me. Another one. Now this one's a little bit more obscure. So this is called flash.envim and this one I added um, about halfway through like my configuration journey here. And it's really, really useful for like kind of niche situations where you need to go to a specific spot in a file, but you don't have a really solid way to get there. For example, in this file, let's say that I'm going to use my mouse here. Let's say that I wanted to get to this fifth desk here at this D right here. How would I do that? Well, I could do something like this. I could like look over here and see that it's 11 lines down. I can do 11 J and then I could, you know, do FD and then I could press semicolon, semicolon. And now I'm there or I could do this. I could press SD and press U and now I'm there. That is very, very quick. Basically, it gives me teleportation abilities. So anywhere I wanna go, I just press S, I press the character I wanna go to, and it basically gives you a tag for all the characters. So I wanna go to the second require, I press B, and there we go, we are there. So this has been an essential for me. It's really, really good for those situations where I don't really know how to get there very quickly, and I'm not having to do like a bunch of H's and J's and B's and W's to get around. So it's been a huge, save, a huge time saver for me. The next one that it's really, really important for me is surround. Now I use mini.surround here and basically what this allows me to do is it allows me to uh, surround selections and surround like um, other things based on context. So I can say like MAB to surround this in parentheses and then I can say MDB to you know get rid of that. I can also do things like I can do MAT 
and then I can say h1 and this will surround it in HTML tags, which is absolutely insane. And I can also do MRTT and then I could change this to like an input tag and it will figure it out automatically. This is absolute magic to me and it is extremely, extremely useful uh, because I am constantly surrounding things in parentheses and, and tags and all that sort of stuff. And it makes that part a lot faster. Another one that I use is TreeSJ and TreeSJ has one purpose and one purpose only that is to collapse or, you know, uncollapse for better lack of better words, uh, list of things. So for example, inside of its own configuration, we have this uh, table of different shortcuts. I can press space M to turn it into this vertical list and I can do space J to join it, which is pretty cool. It's pretty quick too. And it just saves me a lot of time, especially with formatters that don't do this automatically. It's really, really nice for those situations. Another one that I'm really, really trying to use more is Harpoon. Um, Harpoon here is a cool thing where I can basically like tag files so I can say like leader a here and then I can go to telescope and I can press leader a here and then I can press control e and I can just kind of jump to these different files here so I can like jump to telescope jump to harpoon and stuff like that and it's really really good if you have a few files that you're constantly editing inside of a project and you can just have a quick jump list and there's also ways to um, you know select them with shortcuts I don't use this because honestly I don't think my brain's big enough to do that kind of stuff so I, I just I just use the menu like this and I do underutilize this tool a little bit because I'd use telescope a lot but I do understand that this would be faster if I got really good at it and so I am actively working to try to implement it more in my workflow um, so this is another one that is going to be very very useful once I am able to like properly use it so now we're kind of getting into the realm of things that I've added that just kind of make things a little bit nicer they're not quite extremely like important but they are really really nice for example we have colorizer so colorizer is really really nice and it basically just um, adds like inline CSS colors to your like hex codes and your RGBA values. So I can, for example, go to like my init.lua where I know I have some colors and go to the bottom here um, and it is not kicking in for some reason. Weird. So what it does here is we can, we can just go to like my really, really messy Western configuration file. It actually gives you a color preview of all of your different colors in the, your file here. And this is really, really nice when working with CSS and stuff like that because um, I want to be able to visualize the colors that I have. This isn't really like a necessary thing, but it's kind of like, a, oh, it's nice to have kind of thing. Oh, I actually forgot. One of the most important things in my configuration is oil.envim. Oil.envim is basically a file explorer for NeoVim that lets me edit my files like a text buffer. So I can just open it here. And this is what I've been using to navigate around. And I can just say like test.lua, like it's a regular file, press escape, do colon W, and then I can actually create a test.lua file. And then I can press like DD here, colon W, and I can delete it just like you know, deleting a line in NeoVim. This is really, really nice. And I can't believe I forgot it because it is like probably one of my most used ones here. And so whenever I don't know exactly where I wanna to go to with telescope, I use oil. There's also some other niceties here. So we have like my status line here. I'm just using the general Lua line here and I use the auto theme, although this one that you're currently seeing is not the auto theme. Um, and I've overridden it specifically for my personal theme. Um, but if I do, I have a command that I've created called def status here for default status. And this is what the default status would look like for this theme, I guess. So yeah, I, de I decided to make my own, which is I call vague status here. Um, but yeah, so I generally use it. It just makes it look nice, you know, because you gotta have cool looking status lines, obviously. We have some other things. We have like Zen mode here. I mainly use Zen mode whenever I'm editing markdown files. So what I would do is I would go to my markdown file. I would first change the theme to something that looks better for markdown. And then I would press space ZZ. And now I have this cool little like isolated workspace and so, uh, for example, it's really, really good. Also, whenever I'm like editing multiple files like this, I can just press space CZ and it focuses on that specific file that I'm currently focused on. So I really, really like that. And it is a great little addition. You might have also noticed that I have these cool um, effects inside of my markdown files. And that's thanks to a plugin. I think it's called uh, render markdown. So I have, yeah, render markdown here. 
and it's basically just you know it adds some pizzazz to my markdown files so i can actually like put code in here so i can say like uh cb and let's put some like haskell in here and let's say main io main equals do um and you can see that it actually like puts the logo there and does all that sort of stuff so it's really really nice it's a little just like quality of life thing to make your your stuff look a little bit better and there's a couple more here so i have like my md preview here and i use this to basically be able to press a shortcut and i can actually preview my markdown at any point so i have this markdown here i can press space mdn and this will actually open a browser that will mirror my my readme so what i can do is i can if i had more content here like if i just had more let's do like 30p here um, I would be able to actually, you'd actually be able to follow it. Let's, um, let's do norm I hashtag space like that. Will that work? There we go. Now we can see. So as you can see, when I press control up, control down, um, it actually follows my cursor, which is absolutely insane. So that's pretty cool stuff. And so yeah, honestly, that's pretty much all of the ones that I use. There are a couple of small ones that I probably missed here. Like for example, I have some added functionality to my autocomplete stuff here to keep it from um, to keep it from going away when I'm typing in function arguments here. Um, but these are kind of like the more the more like specific things, the more like finer details. If you really want to look, you can look at my GitHub repository, which has all of them in there, and everything is kind of named, you know, what it is. So hopefully, it kind of makes sense to go through there. With that being said though that about concludes my um, setup my neovim setup about after about one month of use so hopefully you enjoyed this and found this useful if not you know let me know if you have any suggestions for me for something that i should incorporate into my workflow i would gladly take them i am new to neovim and i am always looking for new things to add to my configuration so yeah um thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video consider supporting me on patreon and consider joining my discord which is a great welcoming community of developers and yeah Thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.